Hello, everyone. I am Virginia Prodan, the host of Courageous Leadership with Virginia Prodan. We are so glad to have you here listening and viewing our Courageous Leadership with Virginia Prodan each Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time. Our podcast is on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcast, and now on Edify Podcast Network. You can also view our podcast on our YouTube channel. Thank you for your desire to listen, learn, and to be trained to live free and to live a life of significance and success. Many of you ask me after reading my book, Saving My Assassin, or during our coaching section, or just sending me an email or something online, ask the question, how do you pass on your fate? Hope that you read my book, Saving My Assassin, or you will read my book. You can purchase my uh, memoir at virginiapradanbooks.com slash product slash book, and you will be encouraged to see how God has been training me to pass on my fate under any circumstances. Here and today, I'm going to outline for you steps to follow. But if you need more training in group or individual coaching, please feel free to go to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash freedom coaching. Tell us exactly what you need and we will help you. God calls us all to learn from history, meaning from his story, God's work among the human and the human race. We must review for ourselves frequently and tell God's marvelous story and his work over years in our lives to people, especially to share our stories to young people and impress upon the mind of young people and inspire them of the important truth that obedience to God will lead to great blessings and that the disobedience always leads to disaster. It's important. Why it's important? Because all it takes is one generation to transform a culture. In just one generation, faith can be secure and advanced or lost entirely. Well, Judges 2, 6 to 15 tells, tells us the tragic story of the generation after Joshua who lost the faith. After leaving a great fate, seeing countless signs and wonders and God winning victories for them, Joshua and his generation drop the button, they drop the passing on to the next generation their fate. Yes, after years of those miraculous and miracles, that show the power and the provision of God for them, the next generation did not know the Lord or the work that he had done for Israel. What happened, you might say? The Bible tells tells us often about making sure that we pass on our faith from one generation to other, about training our children and the youth in the way they should go. It must be done intentionally. The same thing that happened to the generation after Joshua will happen to this generation. We must be working intentionally. We must be proactive, teaching, training, and leading them by our own godly example and life. I wonder, will 
those people too busy that they forgot to remind their children that everything in their life was done by God, that God fought for them. They were not intentionally, surely passing those facts and stories on to their children. They did not encourage their children to encounter God for themselves. Surely, after years of war, some of the parents drop their guard. Or maybe, dwelling in cities, they did not build or ate the fruits. They did not plant, create a complacency in their lives. Or sometimes, or something else horribly wrong happened that they forgot. And that had crippled the next generation. Sometimes, somewhere, they stop caring about passing on their fate. And soon, their big God became so small in their eyes, and the entire generation after them could not see him or see God for who he was and what he has done. Yes, we can learn from that. Listen to those statistics in America. In 2011, study by Barnabas shows that one out of nine Christians, representing 11%, lose their faith. Four out of 10, representing 40% of Christians, leave the church but still call themselves Christians. Three out of 10, 30% of Christians stay involved in church and with their faith. We surely have a tremendous responsibility too. Soon all the grounds that we have taken quickly by faith will be lost and an entire generation will be left unrich. The Bible speaks frequently about passing on our faith from one generation to other, about training children in the way they should go, and we should do that. We must do this intentionally. Otherwise, the same thing that happened with the generation after Joshua will happen with our generation. There is a lot of things that we can do, especially living actively our life and passing on our faith that it's more than just going to church together with our kids. Yes, worshiping, praying, serving, learning Bible, about Bible fellowship together, all are essential in building our faith legacy and influencing the next generation to faithfully honor God. But our outside of the church it's where the real opportunities are to shine for Christ, to influence and build the next generation of faithful followers of Christ. I will outline for you what you can do, and I challenge you to choose at least few of them to do. And please be patient with yourself and be patient with others too. You will be a blessing to the next generation and you will also be blessed too. I assure you about that. This is part one. So please look for part two that I will post it soon. So number one, it's the storytelling. Remember from the beginning, God instructed his people to pass on to the next generation the faith by sharing God's story, to keep the story of God's faithfulness alive. Joshua 2.10 tells us that the generation after Joshua did not know God's story about his people or in their parents' life. They were clueless of what God had done for them and for his people. They were aware of the Red Sea parting, 
the bread that miraculously appeared for them in the wilderness, the pillar of cloud and fire that led their way, or that the way the Jordan River split apart so their parents, Anchester, could step into the promised land. And pay attention to that. Surely the story of God's faithfulness has been lost. Somewhere people had quit telling those stories. And a great note for ourselves is that as you lose your story of God's miracles, power, care, sovereignty, and victories in your life, you will lose your joy, your song, and your passion for God. Moreover, when you forget all that God has done for you, the evil one will come and tempt you to doubt God and focus your life gradually on ungodly things or purposes, and pride will set in, and you will start to think that you have done it everything on your own. And more than that, the next generation will be clueless about God too. So be a master of storytelling. Never pass up the opportunity to tell God's story in your life to your children, your teenagers, or any person you meet. Make sure your every story has a Jesus message woven into it. It will relate to them in such a way or special way. There will be an investment that you put in them. They will remain in them and change them for years to come, long after you will be gone to heaven. Number two, attend to people's needs. Earn or to pay attention to their accomplishments. Make a special effort when people are in need. Your kids, your grandkids, your accountants, your neighbors, your workers. Physical, emotional, or spiritual needs. Help them to see God's care and love in your action during those times. Many people are open to accept you sharing your God's stories, or to read the Bible with you, or even to accept Christ as their Savior during those difficult times. Another way is attend to as many activities for your kids, your grandkids, your acquaintances, um, your people in your life, like sport events, academics, music, or graduation events. Make sure You congratulate them and give them a special attention for their events. Take the time to let them know that you care, that you are proud of their accomplishments. And especially as you congratulate them, make a special point how proud you are that they are using God-given skills and talents and that will impact their lives and point them to Christ. Number three, use your talents and skills, cooking, sewing, painting, any habit, hobbies that you might have. Nowadays, many people say young people don't know how to cook or to make a soup or a pie from scratch or to bake bread. Don't be discouraged. All of them like to eat. And all of them like to learn something new. So, invite them by themselves or with their friends into your kitchen. Or make a special event and invite them to your group, to your church kitchen, and teach them to cook, to paint, to sing, whatever you decide. Ask them if what they like to cook if you cook. You'll be surprised. This is a fun and a great opportunity for you to relate to them. And while working, cooking, painting, sing, singing, whatever, start talking about your growing up years and how God influenced your life. Share with them stories of adults in your life who invested in you, 
laugh with them about the mistakes and the lessons you learn in this process. Have fun making a meal or painting. Talk with them about a joy of being able to learn or to share a meal with friends or with a family. Passing on the, your fate to the next generation isn't just making sure they know the Bible, but means to live a life serving them that exhibits love and character of Christ. Servanthood is surely countercultural, but it's powerful and is transformational. It's life giving, it's life transforming. So keep on serving them as you are serving the Lord. This is one of the command of the scripture. Look in Romans 12, 11. So keep your spiritual flavor, saving the Lord and serving them. Remember, serving is not an option for us believers. Keep your commitment to serve no matter what everyone else around you does. Otherwise, the next generation will forsake God, will walk away from God, even turn their back to God, and the evil one will attract them with with false ideas or doubts about God. And as we know, if we let them forsake, they will become slave to the enemy, the evil one, and that is awful. We don't want to do that. Because when we forsake God, we forfeit God's blessings and promises. We have a great responsibility to pass our faith to the next generation. Ask yourself, what role would you play in making sure that the next generation faith is ignited and fuel and grow? Can you serve the Lord with zeal every single day for that? Can you share the stories of faith and God's faithfulness in your lives with the next generation? Would this generation or the next generation that will come after us serve God because they had seen God's powerful story in your life or in our lives? Can you pass the fate on to as many people as you know and in the next generation? Those steps that I share with you implemented correctly will help you pass on your fate. But if you need more help training in group or individual coaching, please go to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash freedom coaching. We are here to help you. Do not settle for less. We can help you turn your setbacks into comebacks. You can pass your fate, starting with your family, your community, and you will change America. You can do it too. If you want to be inspired and buy my book, Saving My Assassin, go to virginiapradanbooks.com slash product slash book. You will be inspired. You will be encouraged to see how God equipped me to pass on my faith and to do it daily Change a country to me, Romania, from socialist to democratic country. And now here in America, God is equipping me to pass on my faith to the next generation. Not only in America, but around the world as I go and speak. Remember that God wants to do the same thing in your life too. Until our next Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan. Every Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time, 
our podcast. You can listen to our podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcast, and you can see in, or now also here on Edify Podcast Network, and you can view it on YouTube. I hope you keep in touch and send our questions, and please look for part two of Passing on Your Faith. If you want to invite me to speak to your group, please go to virginiaprodanbooks.com. Be encouraged that you can pass on your faith and choose at least one or two of those ideas. Until next time, be blessed and keep in touch. Bye-bye.